Boy, does it feel good to be back at work, back at the shop with another engine on the stand. Today, we're gonna to take apart an engine I didn't think I'd ever have the chance to buy, a five liter Cummins turbo diesel V8 from a Nissan Titan XD. For four short years, Nissan had a Cummins power plant as an option. It was an expensive option, and I don't really think they sold that well. Now, this engine makes 310 horsepower and 555 foot-pounds of torque, and the people that own them seem to really like them. There just aren't a lot of them out there. That is probably why this was such a hardcore to find and why hardcore to find. I make my own dad jokes and I don't even laugh at the right time. And I had to pay a lot for this core. This was one of these four digit cores. So for my sake, I kind of hope it's not hurt too bad. Most of the cores that come in here, they are pretty rough, but I also don't pay a lot for them. The majority of cores that come in, I have no details on. I don't know how many miles are on them. I don't know what's wrong with them or barely what they're out of. But this one, just a little bit different. This one came from the guy that watches the channel. I have several mutual friends with him and he even brought this to my house. Super nice guy. He told me this is out of his 17 Titan XD. It's his personal vehicle. It's got about 127, 128,000 miles on it and it started making some bad noises. Truck was tuned, had a couple other aftermarket things. At least that's what I'm told. And he changed the oil, he drained it and the oil was um, sparkly. So. That didn't look good, and he decided that it was best to just replace the entire engine. So he bought a brand new engine from the Nissan dealership. He told me it was really expensive. I'm sure it was. But those engines from the dealer, when, they, when you buy a new engine, it, they usually come pretty bare. There's not a lot of things that come on them. They don't come with the turbochargers or injectors or those things. So he had to swap all that stuff from this engine onto his new one. So I got a pretty stripped down core, which sometimes I don't make as much money when that's the case. But because the parts are so rare on this engine, I'm hoping I do okay anyway. So let's get to cracking. I guess there's no spark plugs to pull and uh, I don't really want to turn it over. Uh, we can, I guess we can, no, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Let's just pull a valve cover. I think that should be the first thing. Blue. It actually looks pretty nice in here. It's really clean. There's no signs of water or moisture. Cam lobes look decent. Obviously we haven't pulled the cams out to look at the journals, but this guy probably takes really good care of his vehicles, just judging by the other things he owns and the mutual friends I have with him. So I don't think this is gonna be a situation of neglect. It's also pretty interesting the way they drive the cams. So the chain drives, the intake cam and the intake cam drives the exhaust cam. I, I really love this simple design. Toyota has been doing stuff like this. Maz has been doing stuff like this for a long time. Lots of manufacturers have used a single chain or a belt, depending on what era, to drive one cam, which then drives the other. What's interesting is how narrow these are. That's uh, a lot narrower than most of the gasoline engines, but they also don't turn the same RPM. On to the left or driver side. Right, which one of you is being funny? Come on. Same story on this side. All the valve train looks to be in very good shape. Don't see anything broken, no signs of moisture or rust in here. It looks really good. Next, we're gonna remove this. I don't know if this is a fan clutch pulley. It's kind of what it looks like. We'll get this and the bracket off and then we'll start stripping this down so we can get the front timing cover off. Wow, look at that, it's fancy, uh oh, oh no, there's some broken stuff in there, I wonder what's inside of this, I also wonder if I take this apart if that makes this not worth anything, we're not going to take that apart. 
Well, at first glance, you can tell that the guide is broken. The top layer of plastic has been pulled back, and it looks like the pump is pushed back like the chain is out of alignment, which is peculiar, and it looks like somebody might have messed with it because when you go look at the pump, the high-pressure pump is not bolted flush to the block. So how does that work? Because you'd have to get access to all of this stuff, which would likely mean that you would have to pull the timing cover off which the timing cover has not been off. The seal has not been broken as such. So I don't really know what to expect, but we are gonna to try to put a uh, socket on that and see if that's loose. If that's loose, then this has been tampered with. This should tell us pretty quickly. Okay, that's tight. That's really tight. No, I don't think that was messed with, but why is there a gap between the pump and the block Let's try this other bolt here. Now these are tight. Now maybe that someone put this in a bind. But see, then I've got to pull. I don't really know what to think, but I can see a gap here. So this has definitely been a part some way or another. I just don't exactly know how. And I think this being a part, maybe the engine was rotated for some reason. And that's what pulled this guide apart. So I don't know if that's what's actually wrong with this engine or that's just something that happened as the engine was removed or worked on. The next thing we're going to do is remove the harmonic balancer. Hopefully this doesn't take any kind of pull there. But it might. No, it doesn't. Now we're going to blast all the 10 millimeter bolts out of it and see what else is required to get this out. Let's get that water pump out. Oh, nope. I wasn't prepared. There, yeah, now I'm prepared. Well, water pump looks okay. Spins nice. No damage to the impeller. All right, now I think we can start prying on this thing. I think. You know, I should probably get one of those bigger buckets, those trays to catch whatever comes out of this. Nah, it's gonna be fine. I got pig mat here, it'll be all right. Oh, you know what? Can't go prying on it too much because there's still a bolt in it. See if we can get this filter off. Ooh, hands oil. And the final bolt. It generally helps to get all the bolts out. That's been my experience. Whoa there. Whoa there. Whoa. Whoa, this is actually really heavy. <laughs> wow, that's really simple. Really, really simple. There are how many chains? Four chains in here? Four chains. We own it twice. I don't see anything like awful except for, you know, this broken part of the guide. But why, why is the pump backed out like that? That doesn't make any sense. Someone would have had to take this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt and loosen them, unless there's some piece that hammered out. I, that doesn't make any sense. Does anyone know why this would be like this? Is there some missing component, something failed in here? I also don't know what this little green dude is. So this is what's got me confused. It's clear to me that that pump should be bolted straight to the block and there shouldn't be about a one inch gap between the two. And if that were the case, this chain would be in a perfect straight line instead of 
not in a straight line, which would have meant that this guide would not have been broken. Clearly, it somehow was pulled backwards, but I only had access to two of the three bolts from the that cover that came off, and the bolts were tight. So what gives? So now that that's off, hopefully we can just, you know, pull this really carefully. Oh, there's 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 still some some stuff here. That's not. Ah, oh, yes. Well, there we go. Now the next chain is, oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to take these bolts out and see if I can push the pump straight. See, that doesn't really feel good. That's really stiff. Don't. It is, it just takes a lot more effort than you would imagine. And I don't know why. Looks like I'm gonna to have to take this big nut loose. Let's get that done before we get any further. Oh yeah, probably gonna to have to give this a little bump. Looks like there's a place to put a puller in here, but we're just gonna kind of give it a tap with a rubber mallet. Ooh, it just shot fuel at me. All right, we're gonna get these bolts all the way out, if I can. Okay, and then there was the, the tough one. There we go. Now we're making some progress. Okay. Oh, look at that. Success, kind of. There. All right, now we'll see if we can get this loose. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. Let's throw it in a couple more. Success. Now, generally speaking, most diesel high pressure fuel pumps are worth a bunch of money. I don't know that this is good or not. Um, that's one of those things I'm gonna have my guys look at. It really is gonna depend on what the rest of this engine looks like. Um, you know, I know miles, the fuel looks decent. I think it will be okay, but that'll be something for my guys to inspect. All right, now it's time to pull the cam chains. Look at these beautiful specimens. Man, these are great. Got that tensioner for the oil pump chain trying to fight me. All right, well that was pretty simple. Now it's time to crack the cam caps loose. Did my best to avoid any explosions. Still dropped parts though. The cam journals on the head look pretty good. There's just a slight tinge of metal in them. I don't see really any major damage though. Just the oil is just a little gritty. And the camp caps, not a whole lot of wear. They look pretty good. Here's the matching intake cam. It all looks pretty nice in here. Same thing with the exhaust cam. Caps look good. Cams look good too. Before we pull the head bolts, there is one Small bolt holds the head to the block at the front. Let's see how tight these head bolts are. 
Oh, very. Wow. This is like the Mercedes all over again. And they're tight through and through. Oh, I'm gonna have a sore shoulders tonight. If someone wants to chime in with the bolt spec, the, the torque spec for these bolts. Let's get a look at these things. That's a hefty bolt right there. All right, let's see how easy these come off. Wait, wait, I need a, I need a pan. I've been down this road before. I don't want to turn into Miles Davis today. No rockers. Unfortunately, it looks like this core was stored outside for a few decades. Super rusty in here, feels awful. It's definitely, definitely going to make taking this short block apart a lot of work and it potentially ruin the value of the block. This is why I don't like it when people store cores outside. Don't slice me. Now there's some standing water in here. But this one is the most interesting. I don't know if you can tell, but this piston is above the deck height. Let's get this uh, kind of cleaned up. I'll just soak up some of this water here. We're gonna need a lot of penetrant. Now, as you can tell, the rust is very thick. And then when you get to this cylinder here, that piston has a few marks on it, like maybe it swallows some debris. But the interesting one is this one. Look at that, it's got an outline of valves on the top of the piston. And if you look at the height of the piston, it's actually sticking out of the bore. It sticks out beyond the deck height, which can only happen from one thing, adjustable rods. Nope, maybe it doesn't move. It rocks on the wrist pin. Well, that's interesting. Maybe the head gaskets are so thick, that's just how it is. But it still came up and hit the cylinder head. Unless something else is wrong here, which we'll know when we pull this bottom end apart. Let's get to that other head. But first, I'll show you the head that came off. Here's the cylinder head that was hit by the piston. That is the rear cylinder. The rest of these have some sort of science experiment growing on them. I know better than to touch it now, but it does not look good. These heads still may clean up. Time to get started on the other side. All right, they are pretty loose, so there's no chance of explosions. Sorry, guys. The caps on this side are about the same. Maybe a little worse. There's a couple grooves in a couple of them, but the cams look good, journals look good. I don't really know if any of this has any value. This one has a little bit of rust pitting on it. Again, this engine sat outside for a few decades. And the exhaust, similar story. Caps look pretty good, definitely serviceable. Same with the camshaft. I'm just glad no explosions tonight. Not yet, anyway. Before we do the major head bolts, we gotta get these two out of the front. Okay, time for these tight head bolts. You know what, we're gonna go the other direction with that. This will be much easier. I think. Wow, 
So tight. Come back, rocker. Oh, okay, okay. We'll try it a little. Nope, that is how we get hurt. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I guess I gotta get the big breaker bar out for this one. No. Wait, wait a minute. It was this one. I lost track of where I was at. Yeah, this is how we flip it off the stand. So we're not gonna. Yeah, this is this is probably tighter than the Mercedes. Ah! <laughs> oh man! I need a better engine stand with brakes. Something bolted to the floor. Oh, I already did that one. I think these were the tightest head bolts, but they weren't as shocky, that's the best way I could describe it, as the Mercedes. The Mercedes hurt my shoulders because they had multiple pops of tension release this was just the first one, which was the most, and then nothing after that. Hopefully this one comes off just as easy. Well, again, we have copious amounts of rust and water. It's really unfortunate. This would have been much easier had it not been sitting outside. But it is what it is. We'll get it apart. But I don't see any signs that these hit the cylinder head. This looks like... If there was a problem area, it was the one cylinder, the rear cylinder, on the other bank. And this head has just as many science experiments on it, but I don't see any major damage. Before I go any further, I'm going to spray some penetrator on this engine just to get all of the uh, rust broken down. Do the best we can here with what we've got. I don't have a ton of time. Can't let this set up for a week. That should be good, or as good as I can get it. I couldn't find a ball hone, which was the number one suggestion the last time I had a rusted up engine. But I got a scotch pad, uh, and we'll just try to break this stuff up the best we can. It's pretty thick. Don't say it. That's not what I meant. We're just going to kind of clean this up the best we can before we try to get these rods and pistons out. We'll get some more penetrator in here, and see what we can do. As luck would have it, I walked around my shop, I opened up my eyes, and I found my dingleberry hone. So, it's not really the best, but we just gotta break down that rust. Well, that's doing a really good job. Oh no! So it doesn't do a perfect job, but it's better than what I was doing. Well, that's the best that we're gonna do. I feel like that's better than we've done in the past. All right, now comes the delicate task, turning this over. Oh, so much water in the crankcase. Wow, did not expect that. Is there any oil in there or is it just water? Looks like it's just water so far. Not too bad. So just a few things by looking at this pan. It is a two-piece pan, there's a lower and an upper, but I don't think I need to remove the lower to get the upper off. I think I can pull it off in one piece. There are access, there is access to these bolts. They're not a lot of access, but I think that's how you're supposed to do it anyway. So we're gonna try to get the pan off in one piece, but if you also notice, uh, there's a little bit of RTV abuse between the upper and lower pan. So maybe this has been off before. Hard to say. It looks like it might've been leaking over here. First, let's get the bolts that we have easy access to. 
For the rest of these bolts, I'll just have to use my ratchet wrench. This looks like a job for blue. Oh, okay, there's a place to pry over here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It seems to be glued down. Oh, is this coming off with the pump? Boy, that would be neat. Sure is. Well, it sure got hot in this area. Man, that crank is blued. So let's go ahead and pull this windows tray out of here. Oh boy. That's ugly. Oh, it smells terrible. Why did it get so close? Well, this is uh this is pretty gnarly looking in here. It's pretty milky. Well, it's quite clear this had some water in it because not only is there rust on the inside of the block, but we literally saw water come out of it. I don't see anything bent. I don't see anything terrible yet, but this is really blue over here. I mean, look at the color. Wait, what? What? That is supposed to be the, that's broken. That crankshaft is broken. That is a first for this channel. Now I've heard that this can happen on these engines. Um, I have some ideas as to why, but wow. That is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to get this apart. This is gonna be great. Well, I'm gonna make an effort to get some of these rods and pistons out. Let's see what we can do in this position here since we can't turn the crank over. I just, I just can't believe this thing broke a crank. I guess I don't have to be careful about the crankshaft, huh? There we go. Man, those things are massive. Now we'll tackle the next in line. Almost at the top of the bore. And we seem to have hit a wall or a ridge. Oh, got movement. Yes, we have cleared the first compression ring. Come on. Well, I'm gonna try something that may not work out for me. Maybe it does, but I think if I get this bolt all the way out and I get this bolt out, even if it backs itself into the block, it'll push the rod and piston up in the bore and I should be able to rotate the cap and get this out. That's my idea. I don't know if it's a good one yet. I make. I make lots of decisions every day, and some of them are bound to be bad. Ooh, it popped. It's gonna work, guys. Oh, yes. We can do this. Let's just give this a little that was way easier than I expected. Oh man, we still got at least, at least two and a half inches. That's what he said. Oh, 
Oh man, quarter inch away from the top of the deck. It's moving faster now. We're gonna try the same thing for this rod and piston. Wow, just enough room. Hopefully this one moves a little easier. Pass the first ring. All right, now we're gonna do it a little out of order. I'm gonna do this cylinder here because I have easy access and hopefully I can get to this one. Let's try that first. Man, that crank sounds weird. Broken. Wow, that one was a lot easier because it was already at the top of the bore and there's a lot less bore for water to sit and rust. Now for what may be one of the more difficult ones. This is going to be a tough one. Okay, so I'm gonna reach up through the other cylinder, get the bolt out. Look at that. And it's out. Just give it a little tap. Oh, that one. That was the, that was the one. All right, there's only two left. We're gonna take the one off that's right at the brake. Oh yeah, I think we can get that off. Let's do the easy one first. Oh yes. Oh, it's kind of welded on there. Okay, that's how it's gonna be. I have a tool just for this. Man, that's like welded in there. There we go. And the bearing is, it's, it's down there. It's fine. Holy crap. That's just amazing to me. Well, let's see if we can push that rod and piston out. It shouldn't be too hard since it's already at the top of the bore and there shouldn't be much rust. There we go. There are two bolts left, one rod, that sounds totally wrong. Not what I meant, guys. Oh man, I may not have enough, enough throw for this. Mmm. Well, that's gonna be tricky. Maybe I can go through the bore. Let's, let's see, let's, let's investigate. Oh, well, that looks like what we're going to do. There's one rod cap bolt and I'll access it from inside this bore. We have definitely done this on the channel before, with success, of course. Well, I got the pop out. Oh, 
Okay, very good. Now all I gotta do is break that cap loose. Whoa, almost dropped it. God, I had my other hand here. Otherwise it would have landed inside the block. That would have been terrible. Oh, that one's full of gross water. Well, here are the bearings out of this engine and the top shell is pretty worn in every single journal. It's down to the copper and it gets progressively more worn as you get to the back of the engine. It's pretty standard for a higher mileage engine, but this doesn't have higher miles. I think this engine was pushed pretty hard though. Now the rods and pistons all look pretty good. They're definitely rust stained, but I didn't see any broken ring lands from pushing these out. This is the one that made contact with the cylinder head. You can see there's little imprints of the valves on the top of that piston, but otherwise all of the rods and pistons appear to be pretty decent, though they do need a lot of cleanup. Now it's time to remove the uh, crank shafts, since it's in two pieces. And I'm gonna save my impact the embarrassment of not being able to get these bolts out because I'm just predicting that they're really tight. So we're just gonna crack them loose first and then we'll pull the crank out with the impact. Oh yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. Okay, let's zip these out. Oh, ah, a little adjustability, never hurt anybody. Let's pull this part out first. The main bearings in the front of the engine don't look terrible, but as you start to get towards the back, this one actually had some rust on it. That must have been from when that thing sat with water in it. Uh, that rear bearing shell, very heavily damaged. Now I looked at the block pretty closely. I couldn't find any damage, but when a crank breaks, it can cause small cracks in the block. And if this block is worth anything, it should definitely go to the machine shop before anyone puts any other money into it. Now this is what you guys have been waiting for. Look at that broken crank. I mean, it, it just, it beat itself till it's like smooth. It's like a polished finish. I don't know that this was making a little bit of noise. This was making some horrendous noises. There's no way that this didn't sound like a washing machine filled with cinder blocks. It just, it just didn't happen. Not calling anybody a liar here, but a small sound from a broken crank, no. The rest of the crank looks pretty decent. I didn't really find any other damage. Obviously, this is pretty much just a conversation piece at this point. And I looked really closely at the rod and the rod cap that was at most closest to the broken part of the crank. And there's a little bit of damage there. I don't know that that's gonna matter, but those two faces were facing that broken part of the crank. I always love it when there's a new type of failure on the channel, a broken crankshaft. Now, I have done some reading and apparently the early Titan XDs, the five liter Cummins, are kind of known for breaking crankshafts. And there's a lot of speculation as to what causes it. Some people say it's the type of oil you run. Some people say it's when they're tuned or deleted. Now this truck was modified. I don't know how heavily, I don't think very heavily, but a crankshaft is supposed to be the strongest part of the engine. And I know there's other engines that when you tune them, they can break a crank like a 6.5 GM turbo diesel. And in this case, it would be pretty unfortunate if the crankshaft was the weak link when tuning them. Now I've heard that the later ones are much better, but again, this is the very first one I've ever worked on. I don't have hardly any experience with them. Just, just this and what I can read, like you can read on the internet. This is a pretty simple teardown. I kind of needed it after last week being off my feet. So I'm kind of glad to get back into it with something pretty interesting. 
And I also don't leak a lot of future teardowns. I might change that in the future, but this, this is pretty sad. This is a sub 40,000 mile 2001 BMW Z3. So a three liter manual. This car to be worth a bunch of money, except this is from Hurricane Ian. I've been getting a few flood cars in and I think I'm going to do a video on trying to get a flooded car running, but it's not going to be this one. The water was too high, fried pretty much every single piece of electronics in this thing. And unfortunately, or fortunately, the engine is going to be a future teardown. We did a compression and leak down test. And the good news is the first three cylinders were identical. 100% leak down, zero PSI compression. That's also bad news. It'll be a fun one to tear down to see how bad that corrosive salt water is to an engine. I have no idea when that'll happen, but it will be in the future. If you'd like to buy parts off of the engine I just tore down or anything else that I've torn down in the past, or maybe off of this Z3, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our recent parts cars in the blog, so you can check out what we've been getting in. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.